Hello everyone, this set of screencasts is aimed at introducing you to printed circuit board design using Altium Designer. Printed circuit boards, or PCBs, are ubiquitous in today's environment. Most household electronic items can be broken open to reveal a PCB. Smartphones, smart TVs, when you open them up, you'll often see a small green plastic device with several electronic components soldered to it. This is a printed circuit board. There are two fundamental design goals for printed circuit boards. The first is to implement all of the electrical connections between the components in a circuit that has been desired to fulfill a specific task. The second design goal is to hold those components together in a nice compact form so that they can be packaged for a specific application. There are typically seven fundamental layers that make up a printed circuit board. Let's have a look at the image to the right. Working our way from the innermost layer to the outermost layer, we start with a substrate, typically FR4 fiberglass. The substrate provides a mechanical rigidity to the PCB, and it also insulates the device from heat. The next layer is a thin layer of copper that surrounds the substrate. The copper is typically patterned into a series of tracks that connect the components to one another to allow electrical connection to exist. These copper tracks are created using an etching or milling machine. The next layer is the solder mask. Typically, this provides that green plastic that you often see associated with PCBs. The solder mask is insulating polymer that repels molten solder and protects the copper metal tracks from corrosion. The outermost layer is the silkscreen layer, and it typically contains printed text and symbols that annotate the board. Designers will use the silkscreen layer to print component values and orientation of components, and this helps prevent errors when you're actually soldering components to the board because it's clear where and how they fit to the PCB. There are also some fundamental components that make up a PCB, the first of which is a via. A via is simply a hole through the board. Sometimes this is simply to mount the PCB with screws. There are also two types of pads for placing components on the PCB. The first type of pad is for through-hole components. Through-hole components are those components which have long metal legs that are placed through a pad and soldered on one end. Surface mount components don't have legs and simply rest on the top or bottom copper layers of the PCB. The final element to consider is through-hole plating. So when you have a via or a hole through a board, there is an option to connect the top layer copper to the bottom layer copper via through-hole plating. Therefore, through-hole plating is simply a small layer of copper that fills the inner hole through the via. The PCB design workflow can be broken down into two fundamental steps. Firstly, an engineer will design the electric circuit schematic. The schematic shows the components that are present in the circuit design and how they connect to one another. The schematic should be easy to read and professionally drawn. This is so that any person can immediately understand the purpose of the circuit and allow for troubleshooting if there's a problem with the design. It's important to note that the circuit schematic may not correspond to the physical positioning of components. That is, if you place specific components in a position on the schematic, it won't necessarily reflect where they're placed on the final PCB. The second step in the workflow is to design a PCB layout. As the name suggests, the layout provides the physical positioning of all components, copper tracks, holes, pads, etc. The final result of this step is a series of drawings of the PCB that will be used for fabricating the different layers of the board. So that's an overview of what a PCB is and how the design process works. Let's now look at getting started with Altium Designer. Altium Designer is the industry standard for PCB design. It's a robust and powerful application and if you're a designer in the embedded systems industry, it's likely that you'll be using Altium Designer to create PCBs. James Cook University has a license agreement for in-class usage when you're working at a JCU computer, or if you wish to work at home on your own PC, you can also have a license for that. In the next step, I'll show you how to connect your home computer to the JCU server license for Altium. If you don't have an Altium license for whatever reason, Several free alternatives exist, such as KiCad EDA, Autodesk Eagle, and DesignSpark PCB. Ultimately, if you learn how to use Altium, you can learn how to use any of these packages because the PCB design process is similar across these software packages. So if you're working at home or on your own PC, 
you'll need to activate James Cook University's Altium license over a virtual private network. If you're working on a JCU lab machine, feel free to skip these steps. The first step is to download and install an evaluation version of Altium Designer. You can do this by visiting the Altium webpage, www.altium.com. Select the Products tab and select Altium Designer. Scroll down until you see the Free Trial tab. Select the Free Trial option. Enter your information and subscribe for an Altium Designer free trial. Once you've been emailed the trial, download and install it. After you've downloaded Altium, the next step is to make a VPN connection to James Cook University. The JCU IT staff have created a very useful guide for proceeding with this step. To see this guide, please click the link in the YouTube video description. Once you've completed the VPN guide, you should have Global Protect installed on your home machine. Global Protect is shown in the notification area with a small earth symbol. In my case, there's a small red X on the symbol indicating that the VPN is disconnected. To proceed with this step, we'll need to connect the VPN. Right click the notification area and select connect. Once the JCU VPN connection is established, you can then connect to the Altium license server through Altium Designer. The next step is to start Altium and open the license management window via the DXP drop-down menu, selecting my account and then the admin tab. So we go to the DXP drop-down menu, select my account, select the admin tab. The next step is to select set up a private license server and enter the following information. Set up private license server, the information you need to enter are the server name, tvl-flexlm3.jcu.edu.au and the server port, 21001. Also make sure you have the username radio button selected for the primary server and select OK. Eventually, Altium will connect to the private license server James Cook University has subscribed to. You then may need to select the Altium Designer tab shown here and select Activate License. To view the status of your license, you can drop down the Altium Designer licenses and you will see your computer's host name listed under the available licenses. Now Altium is ready to use. Now that you have Altium Designer installed, let's take a brief moment to get familiar with the Altium Designer environment. In the top left hand corner, via the DXP drop-down menu, you can access Altium's system menu. This allows you to modify features such as environment preferences and license server information. Whenever you have an open document, it will exist in a document tab at the top page of the screen. There are also several menus, toolbars, and shortcuts for operating specific tools in the Altium environment. A navigation toolbar exists in the top right that allows you to search for specific folders and files. The main design window takes up the large portion of the screen. So when you're designing a schematic or a PCB, you have a view of the entire document. There are also several workspace panels that are accessible in the left hand side of the screen and the bottom right side of the screen. There are workspace panels for managing the projects and managing the various tools for schematic and PCB editing. This completes our getting started with Altium video. In the next series of videos, you're going to work along as we develop an example project from start to finish, working on the schematic, the PCB, and then the fabrication outputs.